116. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Psalms 116 says, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Glory to God. The sorrows of death compass me and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. But verse 4 says, Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord. Somebody shout, Gracious is the Lord. And righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth thee simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Here it is, return unto thy rest, O my soul. For the Lord hath dealt, uh, dealt beautifully and hath dealt bountifully with me. Glory to God. We read in your hearing Psalms 116, verses 1 through 7. Amen. The Lord's word is already blessed, and the people of God are blessed because of the word. Come on, let's continue to give God glory as we receive Hallelujah. Sister Hallelujah. Mitchell in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Let us worship God. Oh, 
Yeah. 
in the next five seconds, can you lift up your hands? And without any coaching or private, lift up your voice in this atmosphere and shout. I said, lift up your voice and shout.
Let's do what it like it. So call it up and say we worship. And I adore you. May we declare nobody like you. Say we worship. And I adore you. And we declare there's nobody like you. Say we worship. And I adore you. Say we declare there's nobody like you. Say we worship. And I adore you.
There's nobody like the Lord. Come on, tell somebody else on the other side. Say, neighbor, oh neighbor, there's nobody like Jesus. And if you know that, come on, lift up of a sound in this house and declare there's nobody like the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. We give him glory and we give him honor and we give him praise. We thank the Lord tonight for our here being. We thank the Lord for the presence of the Lord that's in this house. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, I don't know about you, but tell them I've been saved all day. Come on, is there anybody else in the room that can testify that I've been saved all day long? My mama used to sing a song that said, all day, all day long, I know I've been with Jesus. Somebody shout all day. Hallelujah, I'm sanctified. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I had a voice, if I had a little voice, I would sing it all day. All day long, we should be just like this. I know I've been with Jesus all day long. We bless the Lord and we thank the Lord. I feel a little pressure on me. We're applying the pressure. Hallelujah. But we thank the Lord. Hallelujah. For his saving power. Not only did he save me, but he sanctified me. And he filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I'm so glad about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, but what I will do, Pastor King, we're getting ready to receive our offering. But we're in revival. Hallelujah. We're in revival. Hallelujah. We're, we're in revival. Y'all got that watch spirit tonight. Hallelujah. We, we're just watching. And maybe it's because you can't hear. But... I'm going to sing a little bit of it. And my voice is going up. But Pastor King going to pick it up. Praise the Lord. Y'all know that song? All day. All day long. Oh, I know I've been with Jesus all day.
Anybody here glad to be saved? Hallelujah. I've been saved all day. I didn't say I was perfect, but I said I've been saved all day long. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We magnify him. It's Tuesday night, and we're in revival. And I'm glad to be back in the house of the Lord. We are we in consecration. We've been praying. We've been fasting. Hello, somebody. I don't hear nobody talking. Y'all ain't been fasting. You've been fasting. You've been praying. Hallelujah. You ought to have some joy. The Bible says if you need some joy, do what? Leap for it. <laughs> but I want you to know I got some joy like a river. 
the six I claimed in the 2024, God has still been good. He's been waved out of nowhere. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you what he's getting ready to do. Can anybody praise him for what he's about to do? Hallelujah. I'm praising him now for what he's getting ready to do. I'm going to watch, I'm going to wait, and I'm going to anticipate. For I know he will do just what he said. Somebody holler a few more days, a few more days. Hallelujah. It's personal, Bishop. It's personal. It's personal. I, I, I'm not here. I'm not here to pump you up. Because if it's not in your heart, you just don't got it. But I'm telling you, it's down in my heart. I want to be a Christian. Down in my heart. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I have joy. I'm telling you, I don't have much of a voice. And I needed to come back by this weekend. But I'm telling you what I got, I'm going to lift up my voice. Like a trumpet in Zion. And give God all the glory. Because the devil could have could have killed you on a Tuesday. Listen. I said the devil could have killed you on a Tuesday. But all day you've been alive. And if you still breathing, you ought to be praying. If you got a pulse, you should have a praise. Is there anybody here that want to give God some glory with me? Yes, sir. that God is getting ready to give us a testimony, Bishop, of what he's getting ready to do. But all he needs to do is thank him in advance for the door that's getting ready to open. I'm not saying you're not going to go through nothing in 2024, but if you just know how to maintain your posture and maintain your praise and align your spirit with what the word of God, watch God change things.
The man name could be on a flyer somewhere. Hello, somebody. Your name could be on a flyer somewhere. Said in memory. But I want you to know I'm not in the memory, I'm in the moment. Look at somebody and tell them I'm not in the memory. I'm in the moment. I thank God I'm not in the morgue. But I'm in the moment. And you ought to give God praise that rest in peace is not in front of your name. The lake is not in front of your name. Y'all think it's because of your mercy that you're here. <laughs> Y'all think it's because of your grace that he's brought you this far. But no goodness of my own. Because if it had not been for him, I wouldn't be here tonight. But all I can say is, God, I thank you. When I can't say nothing else, I think about all the ways he's made and all the doors that God, I thank you. Hallelujah for what you've done. Because it could have been me. Outdoors. No food. No clothes. But God, I pray. We honor the Lord. We honor the Lord. church. Come on. All the way from the big city. Is it is it Ladder? Marion Ladder. Yeah. The big city. Two stoplights. The big city. Of Ladder and yeah, Marion. We thank God for what the Lord is doing there. And we want to give God praise to the King of Kings. Yeah. And the Lord of Lords. Our King. 
reigns forever. He is the God of Jesus in his name. And we do bless the Lord. We're getting ready. You may be seated. We're moving forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for our King. Hallelujah. We bless his name. Hallelujah. There's nobody like him. Hallelujah. We glorify his name. And we give him the glory. We get ready to receive as our deacons. And they will come. And we're getting ready to receive our evening offering. And while they're coming, I just want to make a quick announcement. Um, for those of you all who gave a seed on Sunday morning to the new cash app, we're asking you to um, it failed, so we're asking you all to resend that seed back tonight. Hallelujah to the dollar sign True Light SOP. Am I right, Elder? True Light SOP. So for those of you all who sold a seed, a seed on Sunday, so for some of you all, you you noticed it did not go through when you cashed up, but you are uh, you are uh, the cash up is open and it is available for you to um, give that offering on tonight. But we're asking everybody who can and will give a $10 offering on tonight. Everybody who can and will. Our way to give hallelujah is dollar sign true by SOP which is our cash app. We also have credit card accessibility. You may see Elder Stephanie McRae on my left, your right, and you can just give plain old-fashioned cash. Hallelujah. And uh, Minister Mason is at the front to receive that offering. So we're going to ask everyone that can and will, if you would stand as we receive this offering. Hallelujah. Stand as we receive this. Father, we thank you for your gift. We thank you for the givers. Father, we ask your God to bless this offering. Oh God, we ask your God to use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And Father, we give you praise. Multiply it in Jesus' name. We pray and we thank you. And everyone say amen. Our ushers uh, will lead you from the rear. the word of the Lord. I want you to sit in your tent doors with your tent doors open. Hallelujah. And I want you to put your umbrella down because it's getting ready to rain. And we want you to receive the word of God from the man of God. Come on, give God praise as Lady McKnight comes at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house. Hallelujah. How many of you are grateful to be here on tonight? How many of you came with great expectation, ready to receive what God has for you all tonight? I am to introducing Dr. Brian McKnight. He is the senior leader of the Transformation Community Church. He will be consecrated in May as bishop. Amen, amen. And God, is, I'm his wife, of course. We have. 
have two lovely children, and God has been certainly grateful to us. He's just so good, and he's just been being God, amen, in our lives. So we just ask that you just receive what God has for you on tonight, and as he come forth, you may stand at his time. It is of the Lord's mercies that will not consume. His compassions will not live new every morning. Great is the faithfulness of our God. You know that the Lord is great and he's faithful. You ought to give him a good praise. All over this room tonight. I know we could praise the Lord all night, but I think he deserves a little better than that. Come on, saints. Oh, he deserves way better than that. I said he deserves way Thank the Lord for this night, this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord once more again. And I'm so grateful for life, health, and strength. I thank God for the activities of our limbs. I thank God because he woke me up one more time. And I'm grateful. And we thank the Lord for the great pastor, the honorable Bishop David Baxter and Lady Baxter and the Baxter children. Thank God, keep on for Pastor James King and Pastor Lawrence and th their wives and children. And I thank God for my wife, my children, my brother, and some of the saints from Transformation and all the preachers. Thank the God for Elder Reeves on tonight as well for Marion and everybody in their respective place. I'm so excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I really am. I feel the presence of the Lord and I told some people, I said, Bishop Baxter has a powerful conference every year. And it is one of the most spirit-filled conference I've been to in a long time. It's no fluff. It's no foolishness. The presence of God is sustaining the whole service. And I'm just grateful for God using him to host a conference every year where the presence of God is present. Understand, God is omnipresent, but he is not everywhere, and he's not in everything. Are oh, you understanding me? Oh, he's omnipresent, but he's not always present. He doesn't reveal his presence. His Holy Spirit doesn't always manifest itself. So it is important that we honor God when we gather. And he's not just present, but we feel his presence. Hallelujah. And I thank the Lord for that in this house. And even as I heard over there earlier in the spirit, that there is another harvest that's coming. There is a new harvest that's coming that, ha that has not yet seen this house that has not yet had the experience of this house, but they are seeking for a house that's authentic and that has the presence of the Lord. And so I pray that you will open up your spirit to receive this next harvest. And even the spirit of the Lord is saying that you are gracious to deal with that kind. There is a kind that's coming that God has graced you to handle that others won't. And some because they see the presence of the Lord that this is a great house but they have trust issues because they have some issues but people have mishandled them but God is going to use you to help mend them and to help mold them and they're going to become all that God has created them to be your grace to handle it God has made you a Jonathan he's made you he's made you a Reuben because sometimes people talk about the main character. But if it was not for Jonathan, David would have lost his life. If it wasn't for Reuben, Joseph would have lost his life. But God has made you a middleman for generations as well. But to help draw people back to him. Who've been present in the church, but, be, but they walked away from God. Because you can show up to church and still walk away from God. Oh, sure. I have times where I was on the organ because.
because it was my assignment, but I had no connection with God. But I'm so grateful that God has restored my connection. Anybody ever been in that season of your life? You felt disconnected and God restored it. You tried to dance, you tried to speak in tongues, and it just wasn't right, but God restored. Hallelujah. Thank God for restoration. Tell somebody I thank him for restoration. He restored my soul.
But I believe that God is saying this year is going to be a year of healing for the body of Christ. That we will not function dysfunctionally, but we will function as God has ordained us to function. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, fix me. Oh, Lord, fix me.
whatever that thing is that you've been praying about is getting ready to shift. And it's not going to happen the way you think it's going to go. God says, I'm going to work it out and it's going to get, and he said this here, I'm going to give you peace about it. But there's a shift that's getting ready to happen in something. It looks like it's going one direction. But God says, get ready to shift that thing for you. And even in the area of your employment, I don't know where you work, but there's some things that you're praying about. It's almost like you're disgusted being in that environment. But God told me to tell you he's getting ready to shift. Either he says, I'm going to give you two options. I'll move them or I'll move you. But in this season, that goes shot He said, I'm going to shot I'm going to give you peace tonight. You're going to rest.
Sometimes God knows how to give us what we didn't ask for. I'm just here to serve. I didn't ask to be paid, Pastor. I didn't ask for a love offering. I just came to do my assignment. But God says, I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. There is a woman who fed the prophet and built him a room. She didn't ask for a son. He asked around, said, what can I do for her? And God gave her a miracle that money couldn't buy. And I came to tell some other people in this room because I believe that I believe that the promises of God is contagious. So what God speaks to him, I'm going to praise him as if he's speaking it to me. And God said, I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. You, you weren't asking for this, but, but just because you've been faithful, just because you did it, and everybody told you that you were crying.
and her uh, her son-in-law. Yeah, he was there, and he walked past me and spoke. And the Spirit of God, he, he spoke to me and said, "Pray for him." It was as if I heard something in his voice. You know, it, it was, "Hey, how you doing?" Always. And I heard, and so in the service, I stopped and I said, "This sounds crazy, but stand up." He was losing weight, and they didn't know what was happening. I didn't know none of his business, but at the salutation, you remember a child leaped at the salutation, and I heard something in the spirit. Well, the next week he went, and they found out what they could not find. The, and so when I was praying for her, I told the Holy Spirit to locate because the, I'm on my shot time you know because there's some time where doctors can't find things and the Holy Spirit has to locate I'm not scared of the problem because God is a healer but I just need it to be located so I'm telling the Holy Spirit right now whatever it is you know others let me know if the doctors can't find it if the lawyers can't find it Judge don't know how to handle it. I say, okay. I know what I hear in the spirit. Located in Jesus' name. We can't pull it up on our reports. Located in Jesus' name. shouted with the priests when the priest blew with the 
trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. God did not make a mess just to work a miracle. I can, I can preach that, but we're not. <laughs> so, so that the people went up into the city, eat every man straight before him, and they took the city. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in their curse them for Achan. Let's stop there. Verse 12 and 13. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turned their backs before their, their enemies because they were a curse. Neither will I be with you anymore except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Up, sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. O Israel, thou canst not stand before thine enemies, and also you can't go forward. Because, mind you, Jericho is not their stopping place, it is God's promise. And they're fighting. And so some of us can't go forward because we've not yet dealt with the accursed thing. Yeah. It says, until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Our subject is cursed victory. Right. Cursed victory. God is calling us back to the basics. Yes, and consecration was a part of our commitment to Christ. It wasn't just an event, it was a lifestyle. And I said was because there is a culture that don't believe in consecration. It's this culture now of just come have a worship experience. But they don't have a desire for relationship. And you have to be careful that you are not so excited about the experience with Christ that you don't have relationship with God. Church has become an entertainment place. And I don't come to be helped, I come for hype. And I remember my pastor told me that whatever you come expecting is what you will receive. And so it is not that the preacher is not preaching or teaching. It is that my perspective and my expectation is set for what I want. This is why people can only abstract what they want to hear through your message. But they don't hear the whole matter. Uh, so if it's a messy point, that's all they take. But the message that God wants them to hear, they leave at the altar. This is why people get offended on one side, but the others get helped on the other side. Because he talking about me. No, that is conviction. And I believe that we... We are raising a culture who don't understand how to respond to the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. The devil wants to condemn you, but God wants to convict you. But when conviction comes, it comes to change you. And the only way God can change you, he has to offend who you are. If you were never offended, then that means that you would never examine yourself to change. So if my pastor never stepped on my toes, I need to leave. If my pastor never hurt my feelings, it may be I don't have a pastor, I have a pacifier. And God did not call us to pacify you. He called us to challenge you so that you can become as babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Tell somebody you gotta grow, you gotta grow, you gotta grow. You don't need to just need to shout and dance and run. You gotta grow in God. I told the saints Sunday, I say after we come through salvation and the gospel, then now you gotta hear the kingdom of God preach because you got to grow beyond he loves you. You got to grow beyond he care about you. You got to grow beyond he died on the cross. Now you got to come at a place of accountability. You're not in a place Holy Spirit, help me tonight. Help me on the night that, that we want to stay beige because we don't want to be accountable. I don't know that stupid spirit. That's what the Holy Ghost told me is a stupid. I, I, don't, I didn't know that. No, you sat in church but you turned a deaf ear. I've learned that the dumb spirit in the Bible is not just the inability to hear, but it is the unwillingness. And there's some people who have a dumb spirit. You don't have a disability. You just have a spirit of rebellion. The Bible says 
it says that rebellion is as witchcraft. It didn't say that it is witchcraft. It is said that it is equal to witchcraft. Oh, you hear me, saints of God? And so I believe that the saints kept us on consecration. Hear this. The saints kept us on consecration not just for us to be spiritual, but for us to have character. They kept us on consecration not just for us to be spiritual, hear me, but for us to have character. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people who are called, but they lack godly character. Come on, Jesus. They're gifted, but they lack guidance. Yeah, yeah. Bible says a man is gift would make room for him uh-huh. and bring him before great men. Yeah. But it is a man's character that would keep him in the room that his gift has made room for him yes, in. Sir. Yes, sir. Your gift can get you there. But it is your character. I'm going to it tonight. Your character is a sign of your commitment to Christ. It's not your dance. It's not the gift of tongues. It is not even your title. It is your character. And this is the problem in the body of Christ that many have obtained gifts, but they lack fruit. Oh, yeah, they have 1 Corinthians 12, but they don't have Galatians chapter 5. We, we mastered the gifts, but we don't have the fruit. The Bible tells us, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, which is love, which is a fruit of the spirit, I am become as sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains and have not charity. I am nothing. Every gift don't mean nothing if you don't have the fruit. May I submit this, that you can't choose the fruit you want. You got to get all of them. Okay. Uh, you can't choose the fruit you want. You can't choose when you have the fruit either. Because if I'm going to operate godly, I have to make sure that every day I'm walking Ye are the salt of the earth. And salt that has lost its consistency. Its savior. It's not good, but for men treat the feet to tread upon. And I believe that there are some people who, who they're salty on Sunday, but they're messy on Monday. And so what happens is you get all of this word on Sunday and you dance over it, but you empty your container and fill it up with foolishness. And we wonder why our churches are not growing. It's not growing, not because the word is not being preached. It's what, you know what, let me stop here. I'm going to get back on the message. But, you know, there are people, oh, you, you know, the church need to come out the four walls. The church need to come out the four walls. Honey, we come to church an hour and 30 minutes. We spend eight to 12 hours on our job. We spend more time out of church than in church. So the problem is not coming out of the four walls. The question is, what are you doing? you're out. That's what we got the question. What are you doing while you're out? What we're doing. And half of the time, even when we're on the four walls, we're still out because we're texting. You know, we're on Facebook. We're posting. So you're still out. Your body present, but your mind ain't here. And we wonder why we have empty spirits and we can't fight and we're in this emotional age group you know our older saints didn't have much education they didn't have good grammar but they didn't fall apart and they went through some horrific things your husband didn't talk to you he looked at you funny and you about to fall apart they had husbands who slept around the whole time and they still function oh y'all ain't gonna talk to me they were able to handle some hard things because when they got the church, they opened up their spirit. When you come in the house of God, you can't come with a closed spirit and only open it up when you want to hear what you want to hear. But you have to open up, you have to tell God, my storage is empty, not just my bank account, but my storage is empty, not just my 401k, but my storage is empty. Every time I walk in the house of God, I come empty. It's not that I don't have the word of God in me, but I need God to put something in me because I don't know what I'm going to deal with with this week and the Bible says believe the Lord your God so shall you be established but if I believe the prophet that's when I'm going to prosper prosperity is in the prophet's mouth it's in the it's in the prophet's mouth it's in the it's in the prophet's mouth it's in your prophet's mouth open up your spirit I'm almost there 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's character. Everyone say character. Job was a perfect and upright man. Job didn't have the Holy Ghost. Job was not saved. He was a perfect and upright man, one who feared God and shunned and shun evil. God extended Hezekiah's life. <laughs> he extended his life. The Bible says in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto uh, him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Well, the Bible says he turned his face to the wall. And he says, I beseech you, thee, O Lord, remember now how I ran revivals. Remember how I laid hands on the sick. I want you to recall when I prophesied. No, he didn't say none of that. He said, remember how I walked before you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember how I had a perfect heart. Remember how I did good in your sight. It's character. Everyone say character. Now, I'm closing, but I want to deal with, I want to deal with one word on tonight, and that's obedience. Uh, there's a lot of words that I wish I could preach about because we struggle with some of these words like submission and, and serving and humility now, you know, you know, but I want to deal with this word obedience. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is a struggle for people to be obedient. As long as you're congratulating them and giving them opportunity and platform, they're good. But the minute you say no and not now, their whole countenance and attitude change. You'll see how well you're connected after they've been corrected. Yeah, 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 I'm going to say that one more time. If you think that, that you are their pastor, if you think that you are their leader, you will see how well you all are connected after they've been corrected. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's some things about correction that will either bring a stronger connection or a disconnection. Can I say that one more time? There's some things that you just need to repeat because some people need to get it in their spirit. There's something about correction that will either strengthen your connection or it will disconnect you. And I'm afraid that we're in a time that people don't want to be obedient. They call it, I don't have my own mind. They call it, that's a cult. That's all of that stuff. But the minute they fall into trouble, then they come back and say, nobody ain't there for me. Nobody won't help me out. Nobody won't tell me nothing. Which one is it? We're in a fickle generation that they don't want you to tell them nothing to prevent things from happening. But once it happens, then I, I need a support system. What do you want from me? Oh, y'all need to wake on up. It's still early. Church just really getting started. Come on. You're fickle. You got your, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And we're dealing with an unstable uh, generation uh, that don't want to listen, but they won't support. Uh, yeah, I want to be grown, but I want to be babied. Uh, I don't want no help, but I want you to show up when I want you to bail me out. Uh, Y'all not going to talk to me in the room tonight, uh, but you can tell how well you are connected after they've been corrected. Mm -hmm. In other words, in other words, in other words, <laughs> there's many individuals who are talented, gifted, anointed, but they're not obedient. Talent, they're gifted, they're anointed, but they're not obedient. Yes, you know, I'll say this here. There are some things I can preach with confidence yes. because I've walked it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, it's one thing to preach about stuff and to preach what you've lived. There's another level of conviction that comes when you've been obedient. Even when the person who said something was wrong, you saw them as right. Uh, oh, okay, okay. David wanted to hurt Saul, but he says, I can't touch him. He's God's anointing. Well, you know, you know good and well the anointing was removed, but all I know about him is what God said about him last. I have nothing to do with what other people say. That's my man of God. He's anointed. Hear me tonight. And so, and so they struggle to comply with instruction. As anointed as Timothy was, Paul consistently reminded him to follow his instruction. He was anointed. He said, your grandmother and your mother stir up the gift. And Paul said to follow my instruction. One of the instructions that Paul gave Timothy that I need to deal with on tonight, that we misquote this scripture. He said, lay hands on no man subtle. We say, don't pray for people. That's not what Paul meant. Paul meant, don't you put them in position to lead so quick. And I believe that we're manipulated by gifted people who lack guidance. And not 
nothing will destroy a church like putting people who are gifted but they're grimy. Uh, you're putting them in the right position but they have the wrong heart and so now you have an Absalom that's turning people away from the church and you know what God said you know what God showed you and it's not working there's warfare in that house there's two leaders that's in that and you got to watch who spend most time with the sheep to watch who's spinning because I don't care what your title is. I don't care how anointed you are. Whoever is feeding them will lead them. Uh, and so if the only time they come to church is on Sunday but they're talking to Sue Ann Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday it's almost like taking insulin and crack. You're taking something to help you but then you're taking something to hurt you. And that's why people have all these attitudes and have all these dispositions. It ain't you pastor. You know what I had to tell God I'm sorry for blaming myself. It ain't me. I'm standing before the Lord. I'm seeking him for a word. I'm wearing all white. I'm turning down my plate. I'm losing weight. I'm looking crazy. My mouth while I'm hungry It ain't me Come off that consecration I know y'all on consecration But baby you're consecrating Trying to figure out what's wrong with you And you ain't got the problem It's them, it's them, it's them It's them, it's them, it's them. They have the issue They have the issue Open up your mouth wide And God will fill it with good things Well the same way God can fill it with good things If you open up your mouth to foolishness What do you out of? Okay, okay What do you think that you would give out of you if all you're eating is foolishness. What can you, and you can't pray a spirit away. By now, you should lay hands on your own church. By now, you should lay hands on your own body. Paul said, by now, you should be teachers. But you're struggling with the small stuff. You can't get it together. Don't bring it to the pastor's office. You should have enough Holy Ghost to say, sister, if I offended you, if I said something, you don't need it to blow. And you know, I think that there's some people, thank you Jesus, I was on the way here and the Holy Ghost said that there's some people who have self-inflicting wounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, their attack is for attention. So they inflict themselves just to get people's attention. And God said, no flesh will glory in my presence. We got to stop the service because you in your attitude. We got to hold up the prayer line because you in, and work I'm not working with a devil who don't want to be delivered. Come on, you got to want this thing. We ain't going to stay with you 30, 40 minutes. Make up your mind. You want to get delivered. I'm sorry. I'm preaching hard tonight. But God has sent me to help the body of Christ. And I understand my assignment that if the church, if the church get themselves together, we won't have to work as hard. We won't have to stay as long. We'll have, you know, it's only in our African-American church that we're hollering and sweating our clothes. I go at the cleaners and they literally get sick of seeing me because I just can't talk in, in a tone voice because I got to holler at you because that's the only way you get it. Some things we're hollering, you just need to open up your spirit and receive it. I don't have to speak in tongues and say, thus said the Lord just believe what I'm saying because I'm God's man pastors have to fight to prove themselves I tell the saints this I said I said most times when we are closing we preach nothing about five or ten minutes of the message because the first 30 and 40 minutes we got to get your attitude and your spirit right to receive we got to get your spirit right to receive but if you come open, if you come open, if you open up your, the saints of God saw miracles because their spirit man was open. They came seeking. They didn't wait for somebody to grab the mic. They came in with prayer. I grew up that kind of way. They came in, and you know, they didn't wait time they came in. They all day long, they, you know, they had a praying spirit. All day long, they had something in their heart. And it wasn't about who was going to preach, who was going to sing. They just said, Lord, anyway, you bless me. I'll be, I feel like preaching. I'll be satisfied. Anyway, you, anybody, you, I remember in church, help me, Holy Ghost, that saints of God wasn't waiting to preach. If they grabbed the mic, we would have to fight to get the service back together because saints consecrated just to pray they consecrated just to read the scripture they I, I, I 
grew up in that kind of, I don't know about you, but I grew up in monument of faith. And I remember that we would have to carry people out. And I want to understand, if we got so much technology, better sound system, organs and all these drums and click tracks, why don't we have more power? Do you know why? Because we're replacing the authentic presence of God with manufactured stuff. But you can bump all that stuff. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. What profit a man that gain all of this? Put me in a church and heist the windows and give me some hardwood floor and I'll show you what to do with it. This don't mean nothing. I thank God that we built a new church and it's beautiful. But every chance I get, I try to put a run in the carpet because if it had not been for the Lord, bump these chairs, bump this carpet. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would have been in the last three years losing loved ones after loved ones going to funerals where mama and husband is laying side by side in the casket then the daughter get buried next week these are the people I watched my whole life I don't know where I would have been but is there somebody in the room that said it was God that brought me through and that's why I take consecration seriously that's why I take my walk with God seriously that's why I don't do things that y'all like to do because or even if I do it I'm so convicted that I got to get back to Christ because I know where my help comes from. Got to close tonight. I, I, gotta, I, I can't go there yet. I can't go there yet. Y'all give me just a second. I'm almost there. I'm at close. I'm at close. It, uh, it's hard to follow instruction when you have selfish ambitions. Yeah. It's hard to be obedient when you come with your own agenda. May I submit this in church that a distraction spirit is sometimes masked as help. Pastor, Pastor, I can, Pastor, no, I can hear Pastor. You have, you have, you know about ministry. But you don't know about this ministry. And what happens is when people come with their own agenda, they do enough to get in the door and to get close to you. But you have to slow that thing down. We've been making it before you got here. And sometimes the enemy will send people to alter the presence and the power of God. Hear me, don't get so professional in church. Eva, don't get so don't get so high maintenance and excellence that they that that the Holy Ghost can't interrupt your service. Uh, I thank God for the cameraman. I thank God for all of this. But every now and then, the Holy Ghost should interrupt your service. Every now and then, you should say, oh, out of here with the outline. There's somebody who need a miracle. There's some of us shit about. Do you not realize why people couldn't get in the house when Jesus was in the house working miracles? Because he had no outline. He said, Lord, not my will, but thine will be done. That wasn't just his decree when he was in the garden of Gethsemane huh? but that was his life decree how do I know because God says this is my son huh? and whom I'm well pleased huh? how he functions I'm well pleased with it how he handled his church I'm well pleased with it and one thing I learned at transformation down in the country and I'm not trying to impress nobody huh? I'm trying to do the will of God huh? I'm not trying to be fancy huh? when people call me weekly daily huh? my admin get calls about preaching have to almost turn them down do you know why huh? because people want want the power because when they need miracles this philosophical stuff don't work when they got a demon that's torment them this shallow stuff don't work you got to get deep in God you got to cut the camera off sometime you got to turn it down sometime and you got to pray I'm starting to feel something in the room coming on me that you got to learn how to press in God that's why people come to convocation, but they don't want consecration. They, they want to wear their outfit. You got a $500 dress on, but you're giving a dollar. Got your priorities mixed up. You got your priorities mixed up. We need you on the altar, not in the camera. You got props. Can you record me shouting, baby? This dance don't start here. It starts when I'm at home, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. All oh, that is... All that he's done for me. My praise sometimes breaks out in Walmart. I have to catch myself. 
because I begin to think about how good God has been. I'm going to preach in a minute. Y'all just give me a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't have to have insight if I trust my leader. I don't have to have insight if I trust my leader. I'm going to follow his instruction. My pastor doesn't have to explain his no to me. I trust his voice and I trust God's word. For there's no good thing that he'll withhold from me if I walk perfect and upright before him. You know, not if I, I'm running revivals, pastor. I'm going to tell you something. A true pastor is not impressed by your gift. A true pastor is not impressed by you at all. There's nothing that can impress people about, I, you know, pastor, I preach and I ran revival. Child, I've been preaching since I was 12, 13, 14. I'm 30 and I've been preaching over half of my life. I done ushered. I done been the, the drummer. I done cleaned the church. I done played the organ. I done played the keyboard. I done played the bass. I done ran the sound. There's nothing that you can bring to the house of God but your soul that will impress me. He said, I'm looking for a broken and contrite spirit. I'm not looking for your gift. I'm looking for people who are broken before me. Because it was Cain that bought his gift. And God rejected it. He said, because something ain't right about your heart. See, some people, they bring their gift, but they don't bring their heart. Rend your heart. These honor me with their lips, but their hearts. Come on, it's Bible. I'm far from it. Let's close this. Let's close this tonight. I'm almost, I, I felt like hollering earlier, but I didn't. I did but I'm almost there. God gave Joshua instructions to give to Israel. That was to kill and burn everything except Rahab and her family. Mind you, Jesus is in the lineage of Rahab. Yes, sir. So sometimes God will look beyond your filth to see your future. I can't, I can't mess with that tonight. I, I can't mess with that. He'll look beyond, we say it like this, our faults. And he saw our knees. He looked beyond her filth and he saw her future. But we won't deal with that tonight because there's some people in some filthy situations. And somebody told you that God was done with you. But I came to remind you, he can reach if he have to reach way down. Jesus will pick you up. He'll tell somebody he'll look beyond your fear just to see your future. Yeah, he told them, but all the silver and all the gold and the vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. But Achan, he took what belonged to God for himself and caused a curse to come over Israel. Now, let me stop here and deal with this for a second. I promise I'm a holler. Make sure whoever you're connected to doesn't struggle with obedience. Because Achan caused the whole tribe of Israel to come under a curse because he was disobedient. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh huh. It can cause a curse to come over you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, Pastor, I don't believe that because, because I'm my own person. Understand evil communication corrupt good manner. You may be good manner, but evil who you're connected to. And there's many times in the Bible where people were healed because of other people. Uh -huh. There's a man who could not get to God before men carried him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you hearing me? The Bible says it was by one man that caused a curse to come over all men. And it was one man that removed that curse, the last Adam, who was Jesus. So I want to tell you in this season, you need to make sure whoever you're connected with, that they don't struggle with obedience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever, come on, come on, come on, come on, Jonah. Whoever you connected with, that they're not on your boat. They're not in your relationship. You're not in a friendship with them that they cause your boat to sink in this season. I'm going to close it out a while. Israel got victory. Hear me, hear me on this one. Please do. Israel got victory. Everyone say Israel got victory. Everything that God said happened. They conquered Jericho. Oh, yes, the mighty men of valor. They got it. They got victory. They, they got victory, but was cursed because of disobedience to God. Let me give you some examples. Moses got water out of the rock, but was cursed and could not enter into the promised land. God gave Adam and Eve grace, but they were cursed. Come on, you do know that a curse was put on them. And may I submit this to you, that there's still a portion of the curse that's still on Adam and Eve. Why do we see all of this divorce rate? Because God says, I'm going to put enmity between the man and the woman. Why do women have a child birth and pain? Some of that curse, they live. 
you, I can tell, I can tell that some people don't like Bible. Come on, ask your wife if she go through something once a month. Yeah, it didn't lift. You know why? Because you broke God's rule. And sometimes when you disobey God, it has long lasting effects. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't, don't equate the grace of God as you don't have to suffer some consequences. Rob a bank if you want to and see if God gets you out of jail. Kill somebody if you want to and don't say, I found God in prison. That's beautiful, but you're going to sit there. Don't let nobody tell you, oh, he, 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 he gave you grace to get it right, but you still going to obey the laws of the land. Some things I can't pray off you. Some things I can't pray off you. Tell the church to be praying for me. I can't pray off you. Paul and Silas was not guilty of anything that came against the laws of the land. They were guilty of doing what God told them to do and people just didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. It's all my, yeah, yeah. So I want to preach on tonight. I'm there. You can't equate your success to God's approval. God will do things for his glory and still allow you to experience gloom because of your disobedience. God will do things for his glory and still allow you to experience gloom because of your disobedience. Well, our title tonight is Curse Victory. And I believe that in this hour of consecration, that God wants me to encourage some people that you need to do like Joshua. Get yourself up and stop weeping about how life is going. And you need to call the people on a consecration. Because the consecration is designed to find things. Consecration is not designed for us to come here and it's not like convocation. You know, you can show off a little bit in convocation, but consecration says, Lord, if you find anything in me that's not like it, that's what the old folks used to say. Search me, Lord. Try me and see. <laughs> the old song says, I'm yours, Lord. Everything. Come on. I wish I had a church for a moment. And so what had to happen was Joshua had to call the people on a consecration. Here is why. Because they could not go upward or forward. Because when they went to battle, people who, who they once spanked, people who they once annihilated, they was wrestling with to the point that they had to turn their back in battle and go back home. And I want to tell some people that the reason you can't go forward is because there's an accursed thing amongst you. Well, the Bible says... The Bible said, and see, here is the issue. We think just because the church is growing that the church is not cursed. We think just because people are joining that the church is not cursed because we're looking at quantity instead of quality. And God says, I can give you success for my glory, but that does not mean that I've approved you. And so the Bible says that Achan had to come clean. And I want to tell some people in true light and transformation, whether you're online or in person, that if you know that you've taken the accursed thing and you're trying to sing on the choir, set yourself down. I'm from the country. If you know, if you know that you have taken the accursed thing, thing and you dibbling and dabbling and you're on the praise team and we wonder we practicing everybody consecration but it seems like the power of God won't move please come clean because in 2024 we don't need no hindrance there's somebody who needs the power of God there's somebody who needs to experience the presence of God there's somebody who needs healing and you just need to do like Aiken and come on clean well the Bible says that God told Joshua that you got to kill everything may I submit this to you that when you take up the accursed thing everything connected to you becomes a curse that's why I'm telling you you have to be very secure and who you connect with and make sure that they are obedient to God that a curse don't come upon you you wonder why your money look funny and your change look strange because you're connected to somebody that has a spirit of poverty you're connected to somebody that'll show up every week and God will give them bonuses and raises and they won't give a brown penny that's you, oh my God the Bible says it'll be like holes in your pockets, money just fall right through and you wonder why you struggling, it's not you, it's who you connected to, but God says in this season, I'm killing every accursed thing, I don't have grace for what's cursed, 
other side. I don't have tolerance for what's cursed. I don't have no more room for what's cursed. Well, maybe if we put them on the usher board, they'll get better. No, baby. We're not going to put you on the usher board, the parking lot ministry. None of that. Have a seat until God can save you. Have a seat until God can clean you up because you stuck in the ministry. One man uh, caused a curse to come over all Israel. Uh, but after God, uh, after God, uh, I said after God, uh, after God told them to kill all of them, uh, the curse lift uh, and they were able to have victory. Uh, well, I want to tell somebody uh, that you got to be careful uh, because you can have curse victory. Uh, you can see the hand of the Lord move uh, and you'll say, oh Lord, uh, oh I did something today. Uh, oh Lord, somebody got a miracle. Uh, oh child, the Lord is on me uh, and don't realize that God only did it for his glory huh? but there's still a curse on you huh? but tell somebody I don't want curse victory huh? I don't want curse victory huh? he said victory shall be mine huh? if I hold my and let the Lord fight my battle he says this here he says this here for which cause we faint not though our outmen perish the inward man is renewed day by day thanks be unto God for he gives us the victory I don't want curse victory I want godly victory in other words I don't just want God to give me something just for him to help other people but I want to walk around and say the hand of God is upon me I want to walk around and say that God is with me. It is Moses that said, Lord, he said, I know I can be victorious if I go back to Egypt, but if you ain't with me, I'm going to stay right here. Is there somebody in the room that made up your mind that I'll stay in the wilderness? I'll stay in a one-bedroom apartment as long as I got victory. I don't have time to lie and connive. I don't have time to work tricks. I want the pure victory of God. One of the things I tell preachers when they look at me often, there's many people who call me and say, Bishop McKnight, it seems like everything you touch turns into gold. What is it? What are you doing? What books are you reading? And I tell them this here, it's not what you see now, it's what you didn't see back then. You didn't see me when my pastor told me no and I said yes sir you didn't see me when they sent me the ladder to three people and said elder minister McKnight you know they ain't number three people over there and I told Bishop McZeek I said send me and give me three people that I can handle versus 300 that I can't handle well you know in the meantime there was pastors who were pulling on me. There's one right now that's got a nice campus and she told me come in and be my pastor. But my crazy self told to stay in ladder with three people and having to build a church and having to get a mortgage. By now I would just have a nice big church with no mortgage. But I told God I'll stay in ladder as long as you with me. I told God Try to rush, try to rush my process. Keep me on the organ as long as you want me to stay there. I don't have to rush because you know who I am, you know where I am, and when you get ready for me, you are called for me. So I want to tell somebody that God said you don't want curse victory, but you want pure victory, you want godly victory. I do it for my glory. Tell you something about the text about cursed victory. Watch this now. After Joshua conquered Jericho, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that Joshua, that his name was Noah. Everybody knew him. He got famous off that, but he still had cursed victory. So I want to tell you that you can get victory and people will look at you and they'll say oh you're anointed oh the hand of God is on you but you don't realize that there's still a curse but what profit a man to gain the whole world and die lose his soul what can he give in a shame for his soul so what I'm telling you is in this consecration my prayer is search me Lord I don't want the curse thing Search my heart, search my mind, search me, Lord. You know me.
you made me and you know all about me. If there's anything that's not like you, take it out of me. I want to be holy. I want to be righteous. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to be holy and I want to be righteous. Tell somebody I came to the consecration not to look at you, not to worry about you. Who was going to show up if it was just me and Jesus? I came to have victory. Yeah. I came for God to do something in me. Say yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Lord. I feel like preaching now. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that made up your mind that there's something that I refuse to be entangled in? Be not entangled with the yoke of bondage. If God has made me free, I gotta stay free. The victory is in my freedom. I can't lie. Depression, anxiety to hold me.
know what was going on. We went to the doctor. I mean, she stayed out of church for two, three weeks. Couldn't wash herself. I mean, it, I, and, and I was looking at her, and it's like I saw her dying. Went to church, and the saints say, we have to pray because this is not normal. The saints prayed that Sunday. That was the last week she stayed home. Because you got to stay around people that can see in the spirit and say, what you're going through, that's not normal. I know what the doctors say, but that's not normal. And by the authority of Jesus Christ, we break it in Jesus' name. And there's some people in this room that you've been facing things in your life that's not normal. But I speak tonight that the power of God, oh, 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 shot, will break it in Jesus' name. Come on, get your hands up all over the room. Come on, that's it. It might be your mama, it might be your daddy. High blood pressure, diabetes, what? It's not normal. It's not the will of God. You don't have to accept that. It's not normal. But tonight, we confront it. We come up against it. We break it in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on, come on, oh, come on. You know who it is in your family. It's not normal. All of the attacks, but in the spirit, we have authority and we break it. Come on, whatever it is that's been running your family, that's been trying to rule your household, that's been trying to stunt your career, we break it. Come on, say, oh, oh, oh. Come on, every generational curse, every word curse, the Popeye spirit that comes to squeeze the life, the Leviathan spirit that comes to twist things, the Jezebel spirit. Come on, manipulation, domination, and control. Come on, come on, sexual perversion. Tonight, the little shot has been tormenting you. Yeah, I said it's been torturing you, but tonight it be broken in Jesus' name. Come on, that's one of the things the Lord told me to pray about is cancer. Come on, come on. God is our healer from heart attacks and strokes in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh. I want to tell you this here. The Lord said even earlier, I don't know what you're up against, and it seems as though things are falling apart. But I heard the Lord says he's bringing it together. It's almost like I see like this, this like stuff is just, it's not coming together. It's just not coming together. And here's the thing. You are a strategic planner. You are very detailed. You don't live life haphazardly. I don't know you. Well, I know of you, know, bro. But I have not taught you. I'm not. Eating. But this is a your person of excellence and all of that. And it seems like things are not just moving as it should be. But God says, "I'm holding it together." And you know, I see it. But I don't know. I see like some schooling. It's almost like there is a desire for more education here because there is a place where you want to be. And it's almost like if I got to get that in order to get that. But where do I have the time to fit all of this stuff in? But God says he's going to help you in this season with time management. Here. Because some stuff is not your stuff. Some stuff isn't your stuff. It's not your stuff. It belongs to other people. But because you care so much, you carry them and their stuff. But God says, I'm lifting the pressure of expectation to always be the one to handle and help and hold. Thank you, Jesus. There are even some 
secrets that you're holding for people. And it's almost like they're acting funny towards you. But you're holding their stuff. But I say today that God is lifting the weight from your heart. And even this little sense of depression is very minor that we're trying to inch in. We bind it up in Jesus' name. You will be happy. No, no, no. You will be happy. You won't just come to church and look like it. You will be happy in Jesus' name. And I even hear this in the spirit that God says he's doing something in your family. It's as if, it's as if I see rejection, like almost like people not trying to accept you and it's rejection. And it's almost awkward sometimes to even go around certain people. But God says I'm doing some things even in your family. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want curse victory. I don't want it. Now, I try to be, I mean, I'm educated. I, I am. But I try to preach the word of God. I don't try to isogee. I, I always try to exegete and always try to stay true to the text. And sometimes in our culture, that's boring. Because people don't want to bring their minds to church. And as I was praying, I've seen this text preached time after time. And God, I said, Lord, what shall I preach from this? He said, tell the saints it is possible to have curse victory. Where you are making scribes, you are being successful. God is displeased. And hear this. Oh God, I'm almost through. Nothing will keep you going in the wrong direction like having an entourage that's egging you on. They egging you. Preach. Go, child. Oh, the hand. Don't worry about the pastor. Child, don't worry about the pastor. He's just jealous of you. That's the devil in your ear. And the devil will give you an entourage that'll feed your ears everything it wants to hear. And notice, thank you, Jesus. Notice when you are offended, you never go around the people who are spiritually conscious. You'll go around people who are carnal and they feed your flesh. And one thing I'm going to tell you about people who are carnal, they care nothing about it. Satan was upset with Adam and Eve because they became what he was not. Satan was upset with Adam and Eve because they became what he was not. Are you hearing me? The Bible says that the saints of the I'm through Bishop, I'm sorry for being so, but I, I feel the presence of that it says that the saints should not go to court. We should not have all these fights in between us. Here's why. Because the saints is going to judge the world and angels. That's what the Bible is. Come on, Bible readers. Can I tell you that you don't know who you really are? And so the enemy will try to plant things in your head. I'm glad. I'm so tired. I'm glad that seasons when I came up through the ranks of the church where I wanted to just, and I knew I was, and sometimes we're right in how we feel what we're wrong and how we respond. And I remember, Brother McGill, I look, I've never asked to be a bishop. Never. I'm minding my business. Don't want it even right now. Went through all this process. Sitting before the board. And they got to do this. I don't want it. The church going well. I'm going well. But the Lord said, I have need of thee. But I don't glory in the ring or the chain. What I glory in That there was a day when I was in my feelings and in my emotions. I'm through God. I know y'all tired of playing. But I think everybody needs to hear this. I was in my feelings. I was upset. I was mad. The enemy was trying to plant something in my heart towards ministry and my pastor. And I was in the restroom and two men of God cornered me in. So that's why I say 
thank God for your Reuben and, and your Jonathan because they stepped in and they held back the enemy for doing what he wanted to do. You was right in how they did you dirty, but you weren't supposed to retaliate. And you almost messed up your destiny. I always wonder this because I have, I have a unique mind. So time I approach the scriptures, I don't stare at the scriptures like the average person. I always wonder when the man was at the pool, he was 38 years. The Bible says that Jesus asked them, will thou be made whole? He said, I have no one to put me in. Jesus had no more dialogue with him. His next thing he said, rise. Because his mouth almost messed up his spirit. And the thing I'm trying to do in this season, I could quit right now. I'm done. But the Holy Spirit is not done. I'm trying to help somebody not mess up your next season. Because you are hiding or cursed things. Thinking because you got a good job. Because everybody like you. That they're for you. But I speak to every aching. Don't touch it. Don't take it. Don't mess with it. Stay pure. Stay holy. Stay set apart. Stay what God wants you to be. I don't care who is doing it. I don't care what they're doing to make their church grow. We preach the word. I don't care what they're doing to draw people. Changing the doctrine. You hear me? Preach the word. Crowds are attracted to carnality. But the faithful few. Jesus said you have no part with me unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood and the crowd cleared out. But he said I knew they would because they never were a part of me. They never had relationship with God. And so I speak unto everyone in this house, even you sir, stay pure. Stay holy. I'm not old but I've come up the ranks of preaching. And I've never had an honorarium. And I'm not saying anything wrong with that. But I'm saying Money was never my motivation. Crowds were never my motivation. And this is why everything I need, his hand has provided. I'm through. I really am. But I felt this last little part here.
heaven is in your heart. He knows where you are. With rejection, he knows where you are. Are you hearing me? And I want to say this here. That when Peter could not get out, God came in. So where you feel trapped, God is getting ready to step in. I want you to encourage somebody and tell them you may feel trapped, you may feel stuck, but God is getting ready to step in. That's what he's getting ready to do. There's getting ready to be a knock at the door. I said there's getting ready to be a knock at the door. Tell them I'm coming. Tell them I'm coming. You thought I was going to stay here forever. This was going to be my rest in peace place. But you ought to tell them I'm coming. Every naysayer, everyone who counted you out, get back home, post it on Facebook, and tell them I'm coming. There's a knock at the door, and it's me. Oh, shit, I survived it. I didn't succumb to it. It didn't overtake me. It didn't kill me. The knock that you hear, it's me. Every line didn't work. Every word curse can hold me. I'm here now. Believe it or not, I'm here. I got to give the people up tonight. No, I really do. I really do. But I'm here now. God sent an angel. I don't care how many soldiers you put around me, how many lies you tell on me. God sent an angel. God sent an angel. I'm giving you up. God, I keep saying that. But there is some people in this room that you were not supposed to be here. I, I'm, you know, I don't. I ain't supposed to be. I, you know, I had to work tonight. No, 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 no. I'm telling you something tonight. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. That you were not supposed to be here. Not in this church. I'm talking about in your right mind. I'm talking about where you are in life. Some of the horrific things that you go through was supposed to take you out. And I'm not just talking about the older ones. I'm talking about some of y'all young people. But tell somebody I made it and I'm here now. Tell them God sent an angel. You left me for dead. But God sent an angel. Oh, oh shit, hello. God sent an angel. You left me on the side of the road. You thought I was mad and fool, but God sent an angel. That's why I came out of depression. That's why I couldn't hold it. The doors cut because God said I gotta go and I gotta leave you. But when you look down the road one more time and encourage that neighbor and tell that neighbor that the only reason that I'm still here. This part is because God. Oh God! Oh, oh, oh. God sent an angel.
Come on, you got real victory, not curse victory. Come on, Zion. Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord. Come on, lift your hand and shout, I've got victory. Come on, shout, I got real victory. Genuine victory. Righteous victory. Holy victory. Pure victory. Come on, tell them thank you tonight. Come on, reach over and tell three people I've got real victory. I've got real victory. Come on, tell them I've got real victory. I've got victory. I've got victory. I've got victory. I've got victory. Oh, hallelujah. I got something on the inside that's working on the outside and it's bringing about a change in my life. Come on and praise it. We bless you, Lord. Come on, what a word tonight. Come on, what a word tonight. Come on, receive it. Lift your hands and tell the Lord, I receive your word. Come on, consecrated vessels. We need Jesus. We need him to search our heart. We need him to search our mind. We need him to search our spirit. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a word tonight. What a word tonight. God used the man of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, God's getting his church together. I said God's getting his church together. So we'll be ready for the harvest that's coming. Come on, we'll be in the right place and in the right posture and in the right spirit and in the right mindset to receive what's on the way. Hallelujah. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Lord, have mercy. Pure and holy. Tried and true. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We love him tonight. We love him tonight. We love him tonight. Oh, there's nothing like a word from the Lord. There's nothing like a word from the Lord. David said, Thy word. Have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee? Glory to God. Would you clap your hands for the Bishop Desnet Brian E. McKnight? Come on, let's give God a praise. Amen. For the vessel in whom he used tonight, all the way from Marion, South Carolina, God sent a word tonight. And we praise the Lord for what he has spoken to us tonight. Glory to God. If you receive that word, throw your hands up real quick and shout, Lord, I got it. Come on, throw your hands up and say, Lord, I got it.
to you. Glory to God, to anoint the vessel of God. Amen. To, to carry this gospel. Amen. Throughout the world. Amen. How many know the world needs to hear this? Amen. God speaking to his church. And we need to hear what the spirit is saying. Amen. I want everyone tonight to get your hand on a good seed tonight. Amen. And we're going to sow tonight into the word of God. Amen. And we're going home in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're sowing tonight by way of cash up, it's dollar sign MRC 485. Amen. Dollar sign for MRC 485. Amen. If you're giving by way of cash, amen, you can just bring it. Amen. Where is our uh, deacon? Come on. Amen. And get your basket tonight. Amen. I want everybody to get your hands on a gift tonight. Amen. See tonight. Let's stand tonight. Amen. And we're going to so quickly tonight. Amen. Into this word. Did you get uh, what you needed from the word tonight? God knows we got, amen, a plate full tonight. Amen. The man of God preached with power. Come on. Amen. He preached with demonstration. But most of us are under the anointing of the word of the, the anointing. Amen. Of the power of God. And we thank the Lord for it on tonight. We say to Bishop Desmond. Amen. McKnight, preach on. Amen. Come on, tell the preacher, preach on. Amen. Glory to God. We thank the Lord for you tonight. Come on, get up from where you are tonight. Amen. And bring your gift tonight. So that see tonight in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Not you. You good. Not you. Glory to God. We're sowing tonight. Amen. You've sown the word. Amen. We're sowing seed. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. He's sown the word. And we're sowing seed in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. If you're sowing by way of cash out, just throw it up. Amen. Throw your phones up so we'll know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Father, we thank you for every seed that has been sown. We thank you that we sow into this word that has been prepared for this place tonight. Every ear that has heard and every heart that has received. Now, Lord, bless us, O oh God, as we've been a blessing to your servant. And it is so now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. God bless you tonight. Amen. Glory to God. We praise the Lord. Amen. For what our ears have heard and our hearts have felt tonight. Amen. Bishop, you preach tonight. Good God have mercy. Man, what a word tonight. Amen. The Lord used you. Amen. In a mighty way. And certainly we appreciate you for not holding back, but releasing to us what thus said the Lord. Give me the word of God. Amen. The Bible said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And we thank God tonight for what the Spirit is releasing to the house of God. We are in consecration. I'm getting ready, amen, to let you go in the morning, 5.30 a.m. We're on the prayer call, amen. I'm asking everyone to get up out of your beds and let us pray, amen. We're just about through. We have just a few more days left in this 21-day consecration. Amen. We want you to, amen, be on the call in the morning. It is very vital, amen, that we join together, amen, and be, amen, on the call, amen. We're fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., amen, and then after that, amen, you are aware, amen, of our regimen for the 6 p.m. right on over into 6 a.m. the next morning. So let us continue, amen, to be obedient and follow that in the name of the Lord, amen. Tomorrow night we'll be in, uh, in our St. George location, amen, on tomorrow for our consecration revival, amen. Glory to God, Pastor Darren Schuler and the Community Prayer Life Center will join us there, and then Thursday night, amen, we're out, amen, to Charleston, South Carolina. And throughout the weekend, we're preaching, so we need your prayers, amen, that the Lord will see us through. Come on and tell the Lord thank you, amen. Let us thank the Lord for the Transformation Community Church.
Amen. Lady McKnight tonight. Amen. All of those that have come, thank God for you, great true light, that have pressed your way out on tonight. Amen. Those that didn't come, they missed something wonderful tonight. Oh, my God. Amen. But we thank God for what he has done in the room uh, on tonight. Let us stand. Let us stand. Let us stand. Bishop, we want you to know that we love you. Amen. We're praying for you as you, amen, come into your time of elevation. Amen. Glory to God. One thing about it, the elevation has already taken place. Amen. All they're going to do is confirm what already has been done. Amen. Glory to God. The oil is already there. Amen. I thank God for a holy man of God. Amen. A man of God that we can see the hand of God working through him. Amen. No man, glory to God, can deliver like that. Amen. Except he has been with the Lord. And we certainly thank the Lord for him tonight. To these wonderful musicians tonight, we've enjoyed all of you. Thank you so much. Amen. For your being here tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Serving in the temple. Amen. Our ushers, media. Amen. Praise and worship on tonight. God bless each of you. Thank you for your support and your presence in the name of the Lord. Now as we lift our hands to be dismissed, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for how you blessed us tonight, how you put out your power, how you put out your spirit. We thank you, hallelujah, for your word that has come forth with power and demonstration. But most of all, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Father, continue to anoint your vessel afresh. Continue to put your word down in his belly. God, in the name of the Lord, bless his family. Keep them as a trump of the highways and the byways, declaring the truths of your word. Thank you that the devil is already defeated. Father, you are exalted and we do have the victory tonight. Father, we declare and decree that all of us shall get home safely. Some of us are traveling afar and some of us are traveling near. But Father, we thank you that your blood covers us tonight and we shall arrive home safely. Father, give us good rest tonight and wake us up in the morning ready to give your name all the glory, the honor, and the praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray and thank you. And let up your heart say amen. Amen. And thank God. Hug somebody, tell them you love them before you leave.